good afternoon students welcome to the 30th lecture of refrigeration and air conditioning subject today in this class we will discuss about evaporative condensers introduction to the expansion of devices or throttling devices is the purpose the classification and properties in the last class we have discussed about the air cooled condensers comparison of air cooled versus water cooled and some of the examples right today in this class we'll discuss about the concept of condensers right so coming to the evaporative condensers these are used the evaporative condensers are used for both air as well as water as condensing medium to condense the hot vapor refrigerant to perform the combined functions of water cooled condenser and a cooling tower so here the evaporative condensers is a device which is used for both air cooled condenser and water cooled condenser right in order to in order to condense the hot vapor refrigeration and hot vapor refrigerant right for the towers <coughs> coming to the operation in this condenser a cooling tower in uh, in the water cooled condenser and a cooling tower in its operation the water is pumped from the sump the water is pumped from the sump to the spray header and spray through nozzles transfer through nozzles over the condenser coils through which the hot vapor refrigerant from the compressor is passing so how the here hot vapor refrigerant is passing it is coming from the other end to pipe where where the sump right where the in the sump to a spray header and a spray through nozzle over the header coils throughout the which the hot vapor refrigerant from the compressor is passing right so here like this the vapor refrigerant is passing through a spray header and a spread through nozzle over the condenser coil through which the hot vapor refrigerant passes right the heat transfer from the refrigerant through the condensing tube ela jarutundi the heat transfers what happens the heat transfers from the refrigerant to the condensing tube walls into the water that is wetting into the water that is wetting okay into the water at the same time into the water that is wetting outside the surface of the tube so at the same time the fan drives air from the bottom side of the condenser and discharged out the top of the condenser now the air causes the water from the surface of the condensing coil to evaporate and absorb the latent heat of evaporation from the remaining water to cool it though most of the cooling takes place by evaporation the air can also absorb some sensible heat water so the heat for vaporizing the water is taken out from the refrigerant how the how the heat is taken from the water is from the refrigerant therefore the vapor refrigerant condenses into a liquid medium so therefore here the vapor medium is converted into the liquid medium got it so in this way the evaporative condensers will operate so if you see the figure of this evaporative condensers what we discussed right just now will be similar right here see here evaporative condenser here the first from the sump from the sump the water from the sump the water is going up 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 is going up and it is passing into the which one spray header here the liquid is flowing from the pump to the spray header and here the vapor refrigerant is sprayed through the spray nozzles onto the hot vapor refrigerant so whenever this passes the condenser will get cool air right so here that in the condenser the refrigerant is passing in this direction and through the condenser that is air inlet and outlet right the air is passing inside through the gates and cooling the condenser and cooling the and cooling the condenser okay a float valve in a sump controls the makeup supply see here the 
float valve so this is a air out this is a fan so this is a chamber this is a eliminator and a spray header and the spray nozzle hot vapor refrigerant liquid vapor refrigerant air in air out right a float valve in a sum controls the makeup supply the eliminator is provided the eliminator is provided above the spray header to stop the particles of the waste water escaping from the diffused water diffused water the eliminator is provided above the spray header to stop the particles of water escaping along with the discharge air so this is a simple mechanism of evaporative condenser so this is a ball at a level or level marker this is some where the water is going in this direction and is passing into the spray header through the nozzles and from the nozzles it is sprayed to the liquid refrigerant thereby air is passed inside the condenser so the fan is used for exhaust where it is going outside at the same time you can see the air out at the top of the refrigerator you don't know the length so you should draw right so this is a simple evaporative condenser process got it so here you are having the separate the separate chamber so here you are freezing give it a fair part okay so this is a complete picture of this evaporative condenser refrigeration system right so this is about the evaporative condenser next coming to the expansion devices next topic is expansion devices or next part of the main important part of the refrigerating unit is expansion devices or uh, multi is known as expansion device or throttling device throttle valve or metering dividends or metering device now what is the meaning of expansion device so it is also a device just like compressor just like condenser right so this is also a device which is also known as metering device or throttling device is an important device that divides the high pressure ratio high pressure side to the low pressure side so what does that do it divides high pressure high pressure ratio to the low pressure so the other name of this expansion device is throttling device or metering device so it is used it is used important device that divides the high pressure side and the low pressure just see here what does it do it divides the high pressure and low pressure side of the refrigeration system it is connected between the receiver and the evaporator and devices right so it is concerned between the receiver as well as the evaporator it is concerned between it is connected between the receiver and evaporator receiver and evaporator okay so it is connected between the receiver and the liquid refrigerant at high pressure so high pressure on the environment so the contained liquid refrigerant at low pressure right for solid it is at high pressure for liquid it is at low pressure the expansion devices performs the following the functions what is the first one it performs from following the functions so the first one is it reduces the high pressure liquid refrigerant to the low pressure liquid refrigerant low pressure liquid refrigerant before getting lured okay so what is the second point next second point it maintains the expansion devices maintain the desired pressure difference between on high and low possible 
souls of the system right next so that the liquid refrigerant one second so that the liquid refrigerant it maintains a desired pressure difference between the high pressure system and the low pressure so that the liquid refrigerant vaporizes the desired designated designed pressure in the evaporator third point it controls the flow of refrigerant according to the load of a evaporator so what does it do it contains the flow of refrigerant according to the load on the carburetor load on the evaporator so this is about the properties of the expansion device or throttling device now we'll see the classification of expansion devices classification of expansion devices so what is the first classification here so this type of expansion devices are used both for uh, commercial purpose as well as industrial applications so the various types of uh, expansion devices are first one is capillary tube first one is a capillary tube second one is hand operated expansion device hand operated expansion device third one is automatic or constant pressure expansion device constant pressure expansion device fourth one is uh, so a capillary tube hand operated expansion valve automatic or constant pressure expansion valve next one is thermostatic expansion valve next one is low side flow flow valve next one is a high side float valve so these are the various six types of expansion devices which are used in the refrigeration system so we see the first one what is the meaning of capillary tube so the capillary tube is a one which is used as an expansion device which is used as a expansion device which is used as an expansion device in a small capacity hermetic sealed refrigeration units okay so these are used as an expansion device in a small capacity basics small capacity basics so it will come as a domestic refrigerators right hermetic seal refrigeration such that it comes as a domestic refrigerators and water coolers room air conditioners and freezers so it has a copper tube of small internal diameter of varying length depends upon the application so generally default you are having the copper so if we have to use a copper tube we have to use a copper tube of small internal diameter of very different of varying difference what is the varying difference so varying length depends upon the application the inside diameter of the tube used on the refrigerant work is about 0.5 mm to 2.25 mm length and varies from 0.5 meter to 5 meter 5 5 meters okay so if it is installed on the line between the condenser and the evaporator as shown in the figure I'll show this one as shown in the figure varies from 0.5 to 5 meter if it is installed in the line between the condenser and the evaporator so a fine mesh screen is provided at the inlet of the tube order to protect it from the contaminants a small fiber dryer is used on some systems to provide additional freeze up application so here in the capillary operation the liquid represent from the condenser enters the capillary tube due to the friction resistance offered by small diameter tube the pressure drops since the the pressure drops uh, 
temperature drops since the frictional represent is directly proportional to the length of the inversely proportional to the diameter so the long the the long the capillary tube capillary tube the smaller the inside diameter so it is created in the refrigerant flow okay so if you see the figure so these are the capillary tube see the tube it is made up of copper it is made up of copper capillary tube so you are having see the figure you are having the vapor generator out here the vape the liquid generator in right so if we see the real figure it look like in this fashion so see the stem see the stem Okay, so if you see this one, so if you see this one, you are having an evaporator. So this is a copper tube. So the capillary action with the spring design, it is a strainer for removal of the particles. It is a liquid refrigerant passing from the evaporator, from the uh, condenser to the expansion valve expansion valve so here so the liquid refrigerant from condenser is passing to the expansion valve that is you're having less diameter of the pipe therefore the liquid refrigerant is passing the evaporator uh, and it comes out as a vapor of the outlet right Now see here, the vapor refrigerant out, the liquid refrigerant in. This is a capillary tube, this is a evaporator. So if you see the physical figure, so this setup is inside, this is a skeleton system, the outside one is a digital, uh, that is a strainer type, and this bonding depends upon the way of raw material, what you are handling, right? This is a regulator. Okay, next coming to the, TVX have more remote sensing elements so that is also other type of simple condenser so here a room written air the thermostat is located in the written ala artisan okay next next coming to the the first one that is the hollow and slow light slow side is needed for giving the flow rate of the diagram the diameter and the length of the capillary tube the diameter and the length of the capillary tube once selected for a given set of conditions and the load cannot be operate for some reasons so what are the advantages here the refrigeration system using capillary tube to have advantages the cost of capillary tube is lesser than the, the cost of the expansion devices right <laughs> the copper coil for backside is less than that of the expansion devices second one when the compressor stops, when the compressor stops, the refrigerant continues to flow in the evaporator and equalizes the pressure between the high pressure and low side of the system. This considerably decreases the this considerably yes. This considerably yes, 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 one second. Uh, in the evaporator and equalizes the pressure between the high pressure size system and low pressure size system this considerably decreases the stage load factor on the uh, compressor so the low starting time motor can be used to drive the compressor which is a great advantage so since the refrigerant change in the capillary tube system is critical therefore no receiver is used for this system 
second one is hand operated expansion valve so what is the second one hand operated expansion valve here see the figure right so you have to cross sect it's you have to bisect it see the figure here so this is a bisected portion means it is cut into half that's why inside you can see the pink color difference and this is a right so here the figure shows it is a section view of the machine so this is a spiral spiral thing but it is covered with the blue color and you are having the skeleton system so it is also just like a see here the cutted portion you can see the one box the two box the three box three box four box right so here it is totally dismantled and you can see there's a part one there's a part two there's a part three there's a part four there's a part five this is a part six see here the hand operated the hand operated expansion wall why it is hand operated because here are the wheel see the wheel here one second hello uh, uh, oh, sorry. yes the most uh, the hand operated expansion device you can see the figure by the hand wheel so it is rotated anti-clockwise or clockwise direction this is a hand operated hand wheel hand operated expansion wall shown in the figure is the most simple type of expansion wall but requires an operator to regulate the flow of it uh, represent the operator manually so it is a most simple type of expansion wall but it requires an operator so that he can rotate the hand wheel and regulate the flow of refrigerant to the evaporator manually to the evaporator manually means you spin it out right wall but it requires an operator to regulate the flow of refrigerant manually the conical shaped needle see here the conical shaped the conical shaped needle okay the conical shaped the valve needle the conical shaped needle extends down into the valve port and restricts the flow area through the port so when it is closed what happens in the valve the valve rest on its conical seat so here we are not doing up and down first so when now it is totally inclined or inserted down so it can be used for the conical seat right when closed the walls rest on the conical seat the use of the hand operated valve is centered with systems operated under the nearly constant loads for long period of time such as an ice making plants and cold storages so this type of handheld operations or as handheld machines are generally used in the cold storages as well as in the ice manufacturing plants ice manufacturing plants right so when you when you the liver is when the hand wheel is operated up or operated down so here see here the liquid refrigerant is going in this side it was in at this side so whenever whenever the hand wheel is rotated the stem goes up and the liquid refrigerant is passes here and it enters into the liquid refrigerant liquid refrigeration and it is going outside as a refrigerating unit refrigerating unit so very simple and straightforward hand operated expansion valve which is used which are used in ice manufacturing units as well as in the cold storages but it is not suitable for the installation wall where the load varies and the compressor runs and intermittently to maintain the comfortable temperature so that is about the handheld expansion devices handheld expansion devices next 
नेक्स्ट थर्ड वन इज ऑटोमेटिक एक्सपेंशन वॉल ऑटोमेटिक एक्सपेंशन वॉल और कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेशर द प्रेजर ऑफ द वॉल्व इज कॉन्स्टेंट दट्स वाई द कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेजर अटमोस्फेरिक एक्सपेंशन वॉल सी द फिगर ऑटोमेटिक और कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेजर एक्सपेंशन वॉल्व द ऑटोमेटिक एक्सपेंशन वॉल्व इज ऑल्सो नोन एज कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेजर एक्सपेंशन वॉल्व बिकॉज इट मेन्टेन मेंटेन अ कॉन्स्टेंट एव ऑपरेटर प्रेजर रिगार्डलेस ऑफ द लोड ऑफ द एव ऑपरेटर सो दर इज अ फिचिंग एडवांटेज वेन कंपेर टू द अदर टू so here the pressure regardless of the load on the evaporator the main moving force is the evaporator pressure right its main moving force is evaporator pressure and it is used with the dry expansion evaporators where the load is relatively constant where the load is relatively constant see the figure once how it looks like right see the figure how it is operated right how it is operated the automatic expansion valve shown in this figure the automatic expansion valve shown in the figure consists of a needle valve and a seat sorry in this uh, automatic uh, so the same the needle type the hand operated and uh, automatic is both is having a some sort of needle concept okay now the automatic expansion valve is on constant pressure two reactions because of the because of the two things it maintains a constant vapor this so why it is called because it maintains a constant pressure it maintains a constant evaporator pressure regardless of the load on the evaporator so its main moving force of the evaporator is the evaporator pressure evaporator the gunjo che pressure is the main motive of this automatic expansion valve it is used with the dry expansion evaporators where the load is relatively constant here shown in the figure consists of a needle see here we are having a needle wall so this one is a needle wall which is in a flat shape needle wall on the seat which forms an orifice so this one is a valve seat right and a metallic diaphragm or bellows spring and an adjustable adjusting screw so this is a metallic casing this is a metallic casing this is a metallic casing So the entire thing is made up of metallic casing. The entire thing is made up of metallic casing and the spring and adjusting screw. The opening and closing of the valve with respect to the seat depends upon the following two opposing forces that can have a diagram. So the two uses are the first one is or the first one, the spring pressure and the atmospheric pressure acting on the tap of the diaphragm right the spring pressure and atmospheric pressure acting on the top of diaphragm and second one is the evaporator pressure acting below the diaphragm so see here the evaporator pressure the evaporator pressure is acting below the Atmosphere below the uh, diaphragm. The evaporator pressure acting on the below of this diaphragm. See the figure here. So you are having a this is a diaphragm. This is a spring pressure. This is evaporator pressure. But the spring is loaded. Now the spring is moving up and down with adjusting screw. There by the wall seat is moving up and down so that the wall is not so moved. Right. Next. next one is thermostatic expansion valve thermostatic expansion valve 
the thermostatic expansion valve is most commonly used in expansion device commercial as well as industrial application this is also called as constant superheat valve because it maintains constant superheat of the wiper refrigerant right so from the figure you can see from the figure you can see this is a evaporator this is a suction line pipe this is a capillary pipe so the water is going out and the water is going in so here the uh, strip is very small here the marshes is very small just is inverted and you are having a spring seated in the push rod so whenever the spring adjuster screw is rotated clockwise or anti-clockwise the spring will compresses and touches the valve seat thereby thereby the push rod is moving the upper is moving the position from some place to some place right so here the expansion wall we have shown we have shown we have shown the we have shown the figure which consists of a needle wall which consists of a needle wall and a seat so the figure what i am showing in the previous slide i am explaining that figure and also it is simply self-explainable the feeler bulb of the path leaf filled with the same liquid represent is in the refrigeration medium right now see the figure here the original figure of this expansion device thermostatic expansion device so see here one part second part third part everything is made up of some sort of pipe Now see here the spring pressure P is acting on the bottom of the diaphragm. Yes, everyone is joining at the end of the class. Last two minutes, nobody are joining the class, but it is not fair. Okay. Next, the evaporator pressure P acting on the bottom of the diaphragm. The feeder bulb pressure acting on the top of the diaphragm. Got it? So after seeing this figure, you can see the 2D diagram of the figure where one second. So this is a thermostatic expansion device. Here also the thermostatic expansion device, right? So next one is low side float wall. Next thermo, next uh, expansion device is, as the name indicates, it is having a low side float wall located at the low pressure, low pressure that is between the evaporator and the compressor suction line. So here one of the refrigeration system. Because of the low side, it locates between the evaporator and compression suction line. It maintains a constant level of liquid refrigerant in the evaporator and a float chamber by opening and closing a needle wall. A refrigeration system with a low side float wall is one point I is shown in the figure. See here. So it is horizontally placed thereby with a hollow initially whenever it is right. A refrigeration system with a low side float wall. A refrigeration system with a low side float wall shown in the figure where you are having the 
liquid level half to the boiler half to the boiler whereas you are having a float chamber at this position a low float chamber of the second see here liquid level is to the half of the boiler the float ball is situated at the point so the suction line is one side the liquid line is other side here we placed a strainer for removal of the dirt or grease here the lead gasket is placed for the non locking of the material here the needle valve seat is placed at this point where it is rotated with the screw mechanism you are having here is a brochure type of setup see here the teeth so here also you are having the teeth which is available in the market so this teeth is placed at that point thereby the screw is unlocked or locked this one is moving this way and this way this way and this way so at this at this position a new valve seat or valve thing will be operated right the float wall shown in the figure has a hollow ball this one is a hollow ball attached to one end of the float arm as shown here right the other end of the arm is connected to the needle wall the movement of float ball is transmitted to the needle wall by the float arm which closes the or opens the flow of liquid so the flow valve is hollow therefore it floats on the liquid refrigerant on the float chamber so there is a working mechanism of the low side float wall low side float wall so when the liquid refrigerant in the evaporator vaporizes so whatever the refrigerant is there in the evaporator when it vaporizes what happens the level comes to the down this causes the float of drop to the process and thus opens the needle wall so you needle wall open up only this needle wall will open whenever there is air maturity so basic on the air maturity so it will be outside so now operate to make up the amount of vaporization when the desired liquid level is reached the float rises and closes the needle wall just like your Uh, bathroom commode how the water is flushing how it is rising so in the same way you can see this type of thing also the major advantage of a low side float wall is that it maintains a constant level in the evaporator until all conditions regard as to evaporate uh, president temperature now see the figure of the refrigeration system in the low side so the pink color hatched portion is high pressure liquid high pressure liquid and liquid receiver high pressure vapor so the green color shown is a high pressure vapor the light yellow is uh, the, the light pink is a low pressure vapor low pressure this is a low pressure vapor right so this is a low pressure liquid where it is passing in this channels so in this way it is going up and down so whenever the compressor are having the compressor is made up of, is uh, operated by the crank and lever mechanism so here the path is showing down so see the see the compressor how it is working it is working with this crank and wheel mechanism here the suction line is sucking the material and it is dump and it is showing in this regulator wall so here the liquid receiver is receiving the liquid from the container uh, sorry from the condenser and it is passing the liquid line to the evaporating system that is the float wall again it is having a cyclic process so this is a simple methodology of uh, low side float foot wall next we'll see the high side foot wall so this is a figure of high side foot wall just see the figure so very simple than that of the low side foot wall
So as the name indicates, the high side foot wall, it is located on the high side, high pressure side between the condenser and the evaporator of the refrigeration system. It controls the flow of a liquid refrigerant to the evaporator according to the load and maintains a constant level in the evaporator and flow chamber by opening or closing the needle wall. A refrigeration system with high side float wall is shown in this figure. So the liquid refrigerant from the condenser it is passing to the expansion wall. So again you are having a float uh, right. So where it is? Yes. So the liquid refrigerant from the condenser from the condenser is passing into the expansion device, thereby the food float ball is raising up or rising down based on this based on this the float arm is moving up and down thereby the head wall is moving front and back front and back so if the system refrigeration type a high type shown in the figure here what happens the liquid refrigerant from the condenser the liquid refrigerant from the condenser flows into the float chamber so the loki it is flowing as the level of liquid refrigerant in the float chamber rises the fluid wall fluid ball also rises thereby the opening the needle wall so the pike in the so the needle wall will get open the needle wall will get open Will get open. Uh, this allows the liquid refrigerant to flow into the evaporator. So the launch of chi the kinakanapuri pikal thing of the intronchi evaporator right. So there's a simple process. Evaporator. So here, the, this allow the liquid represent to flow in the evaporator. When the liquid level in the float chamber is fallen down, the float wall also stops. So if you put the pike and down, start, you know, everything will become down, thereby closing the needle wall. It may be noted that the condenser supplies the represent at the same rate as it evaporates to the evaporator. Since the rate of vaporization depends upon the load of evaporator, Therefore, the high side float wall functions according to the load. So it also may be used in the dry expansion evaporators. So the time is also less. So with this, I'll stop the class. I have the other class. Uh, we'll discuss in the next class. Have a nice day. So in this class, total Asen Sheikh and Vinay, Vinay has been 323. So these three students are got attendance remaining students are all absent. So tomorrow we'll discuss the class. So have a nice day. Enjoy your day.